In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, by a singular grace, gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry, renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession, we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Haggai. On the first day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehoshadak. Thus says the Lord of hosts, This people says, The time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then this is the word of the Lord, came through uh, the prophet Haggai. Is it time for you to dwell in your own paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Now thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much but have brought in little. You have eaten but you have not been satisfied. You have drunk but have not been exhilarated. Have clothed yourselves but not been warmed. And whoever earned wages Earn them for a bag with holes in it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up into the hill country. Bring timber and build the house, that I may take pleasure in it and receive my glory, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke.
Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying John has been raised from the dead and others were saying Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him the Gospel of the Lord. Today we uh, celebrate uh, St. Pius, uh, better known, I suppose, in our time as Padre Pio. And uh, the first thing that came to mind uh, for me was Betty King, who had a great devotion to uh, Padre Pio and uh, shared that with me uh, frequently, so I can't help but think of her today as we celebrate this, uh, this Mass. Um, there, there is, uh, of course, in his life, um, uh, the, uh, the stigmata, and um, I was privileged to know the pastor of, um, former pastor of, uh, Hendersonville of Immaculate Conception, and he had actually been Padre Pio's secretary and was called on to testify uh, as they were um, gathering information uh, for his canonization. So I thought I've got a remote connection, if you will, to Padre Pio, I guess, through, through all of that. Um, we see uh, Sort of a, an interesting thing in the in the first reading today, how um, the uh, people are thinking wrongly in terms of what the Lord wants, and so often we can feel that way ourselves. I suppose we can feel, or perhaps maybe it's the other thing we think we know what the Lord wants, but it turns out to be something very different. So here they are saying well, no, it's not time to rebuild the temple. It's not time to, do, to build this house for the Lord. It's not time for, for any of that. But they're given this new prophet, Haggai, and he prophesies, and they are to make this building. Now, it is, uh, it is certainly true that there was a time, uh, certainly in, with David, before the temple was built, where David had sort of the opposite idea. I'm going to build a house for the Lord. I'm going to start getting everything together and, and do that. And the prophet tells him, no, this is not the right time. This is not for you. It's for your son. So uh, I think maybe one of the cautions that comes out of the first reading for us is not to be too hasty in trying to uh, determine what the Lord wants in a particular situation, to take time to deliberate on it, to allow the Lord to speak to us in various uh, circumstances and in our prayer before we move ahead with something too hastily. We have um, uh, someone, I would say, who was not moving too hastily but was doing the wrong thing at this time, and that was Herod the Tetrarch, because he hears about all these people saying these things about who Jesus is. He's John raised from the dead. He's Elijah. He's one of the ancient prophets. And uh, Herod says instead, well, John I beheaded, so it can't be John, <laughs> he's thinking. Um, but he kept trying to see Jesus. So there was this curiosity in him. But his delay in not wanting to see Jesus or not seeing Jesus more quickly might have contributed to the fact that he did not accept what Jesus was doing and did not um, accept Jesus for who he was. Perhaps that, was, that uh, contributed to all of that. At any rate, it seems like, even though he seems to have this desire to see the Lord, he's not really acting on it with great fervor, with great urgency. So, sort of con contradicting, well, maybe not contradicting messages today in the readings, but uh, certainly care should be taken with regard to how we read what the Lord is telling us. There are... Um, Oh gosh, I couldn't even begin to number the ways of trying to determine this. But I think one of the most important ways in understanding what the Lord is doing in our lives is not to try to come to the conclusion on our own, but to speak with others that we trust. 
speak with others about what's going on in our life. Use them kind of as a sounding board to help discern what's going on. It can be difficult to, de to determine what the Lord actually wants to do in a particular time, especially if we're choosing between two things that seem to be good. We're trying to figure out which one's the better one to do or something like that, what the Lord is asking us to do. So it is good to not just rely on our own understanding of things, but to seek the help of others in discerning that. I think the Lord had this in mind when he drew people together. He did minister to people one-on-one -on -one from time to time, but he really wanted to draw them together. And he commissioned St. Paul, if you will, to found all of these churches so that people could come together and to be with each other and to move in the right direction together rather than trying to do it, trying to discern this thing uh, isolated on, and on their own. So we make good use of the church community. We have a wonderful gathering here today for the Mass, and I don't know how many will view this video today. But know that, that the Lord is calling us to do something. He does want us to participate in his ministry. And we ask the Lord through this Eucharist to reveal that to us and to affirm it in the experiences that we have and in the conversations with others. So let's pray. We offer the Mass today for the happy repose of the soul of Sylvia Salinas. We pray to the Lord. We continue our prayers for Anthony Settle and Mary Hughes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for comfort and healing for Mark Matthews, Madison Placencia, Dan Branch, Carrie Brooks, Ruben Pena, Christine Williams, Karen Metcalf, Jean Narciso, Jimmy Dean Paris, Sandra and Gary Coggins, Sherry Riley, Jerry Brower, Jake, and Jean Marr. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world, world leaders would have their ear, have ears to hear God's word and act on it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, any other prayers you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord of Lords, we hear of your great mercy and long to be restored by your grace. May we never miss an opportunity to encounter the living God. We pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Pius, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, Grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Pius, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
all his property. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase from increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed Pius, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.